So when we consider our balanced diet, what that essentially means is all of the nutrients will be found at the proper level. I have put a list here of nutrients. At the top is water, which is technically not a nutrient. I like to add it in with the nutrients because water is consumed at about uh, twice the amount of all the other ingredients in, uh, or nutrients uh, combined. So essentially under normal conditions for every pound of water a chicken or pound of feed a chicken will consume, she will drink two pounds of water. Uh, so, uh, and they don't last very long without water. They can last fairly long without feed, but they don't last very long as most living things uh, need to have water uh, in their diet. So I like to add it in even though it's technically not a nutrient. There are the carbohydrates. Uh, most of the energy or calories in poultry diets come from carbohydrates. Some fats, uh, lipids primarily, are going to come. These are the oils uh, or, uh, or fat from other, other sources. In most poultry diets, these come in the form of oil that's added to the diet uh, to make it less dusty and also to add energy or calories. The protein, that is, as we said, that's, most, that's made up from amino acids. And so those amino acids, which we'll talk about in a, in a few minutes, uh, are required at certain levels, each one. And so those are important. And then of course we have the vitamins and minerals. Uh, they need to have those uh, lacking a, a required vitamin or required mineral will cause significant problems in their health and productivity. So all of these things need to be in a balanced diet. Uh, in a balanced diet at some level. Some are much higher than others. Some are only needed in very small amounts. Some of the minerals and vitamins only in very small amounts, but without them, the animal simply doesn't survive. This is hard to see, uh, but this gives you a, uh, this, this comes, well, this comes from the nutrient requirements of poultry. The most recent is 1994 was my understanding that one was coming out in the summer of 2019, but apparently, at least that I've heard that it has come out. Anyway, uh, it's put out by the National Research Council, National Academy of Science. And what this does is this gives us numbers for every, of, every one of the nutrients that are required by poultry of various types. This in, ca in this case, this is uh, leghorn type hens uh, that, are, that are laying eggs, okay? So, uh, and depending upon their feed consumption. And so you can see in the, uh, in the, what, the third, fourth, fifth columns where it says 80, 100, 120, that's the number of grams of feed per day they're consuming on average. And so then you look down the list at the nutrient requirements. And so in crude protein, that 80 gram bird eating 80 grams a day needs a, uh, what is that, 18.8% protein. But if it's eating 100 grams a day, it only needs 15% protein. It's eating enough feed to where we can reduce that amount. So production birds are usually in the 100 to 120 range. Non-layers would be in the, in the 80 range. And so we can see under crude protein, there's all of the required amino acids. There are more amino acids than that, but those are, these are the essential amino acids. We go down to the next group, we have fat. There's one fatty acid, linoleic acid, that's required. Now, that's not an issue because we feed a lot of soybean and other uh, ingredients that contain linoleic acid, so it's not something that would generally be considered uh, limiting. There's the macro minerals. These are minerals that are required in relatively high amounts, greater than 100 parts per million in the diet. That's calcium and chloride and sodium, potassium, uh, uh, phosphorus. Uh, those are required at, at levels. You can see what those levels are. And then we have the trace minerals. These are typically required in much smaller amounts, less than, a, uh, less than uh, 100 parts per million. Uh, and so these are, are also called the trace minerals. And so uh, these are things like copper and iodine and zinc and things of that nature that are absolutely required. If they don't have them, they don't perform. Uh, but they can be used in fairly small amounts. And you can see even there uh, in copper, there's question marks. We don't know what their, uh, their copper requirements are. It's never been a problem in practical diets, uh, but we don't, that work has just simply not been done. Uh, 
uh, fat soluble vitamins and then the B vitamins are at the bottom of the list. And so this gives us a sense of all of the nutrients that are required and how they came up with these numbers. There were uh, scientists around the country, each one assigned one to vitamins, one to minerals, one to amino acids or whatever. And they look through the literature and they find all of the literature that has for their particular nutrient and they find where the birds perform uh, best at what levels and they make some assumption as to what is where the requirements are. And that's where those numbers come from. Some of them are estimates uh, based on the research because nothing was done on point and some of them are actual uh, uh, developed from research. And so they have all of these kinds of numbers and they have them for, for broilers as well, but this just gives you the detail that's required. Now, when you buy sac feed, this is all taken into account and the diet is formulated to meet all of those requirements. So those nutrients uh, and ingredients, the, the nutrients are all supplied by the ingredients. So the nutrients are what we've talked about, protein, vitamins, fats, carbohydrates. Those are all the nutrients that are required. We feed them ingredients to meet those nutrient requirements. So all of the grains, whether it's corn or, or uh, legume grains like soybean or peas, or it could be wheat, or it could be canola, or it could be lots of different things that are typical feedstuffs. They all have nutrients at various levels, protein, uh, vitamins, minerals, uh, carbohydrates. And so what we've done is we've taken those and gotten book values where we take and, and analyze all of these different grains, find out what exactly is in them, and make some estimates for the averages. And oftentimes we will use averages. If we're very specific, then we would take the, the grain that we actually have and we would get some analysis so we can formulate the diets more accurately. Now, these are the typical kinds of ingredients. I'll show you some of those in a minute, but there are some that are pro uh, problem ingredients. Just because it can be used in some species doesn't necessarily can be used in others. Cottonseed meal. California used to be a very large producer of cotton and hence the cotton seed was ground into a meal uh, and could be, and it's a very good protein source for certain species of animals. Uh, dairies use a cottonseed meal a, a great deal. Problem is, in for laying chickens, cottonseed meal has a contaminant. That contaminant is what we call gossipol, and gossipol, <clears throat> when when laying hens eat it, has the uh, the habit sometimes of turning yolks green in color, <clears throat> and sometimes the albumin will turn pink from a chemical reaction between the normal uh, uh, compounds that are found in egg yolk and, and egg white and with the, uh, the gossipol. So those can be uh, problematic. Canola, canola is, uh, is a, uh, essentially a, a commercial invention of, of rapeseed. It has this particular name, uh, Can uh, Canada, uh, Canadian, oil uh, that's free of a certain uh, contaminant. And so rapeseed is not a very good feedstuff, but it was changed into canola uh, by breeding and other meat methods, and now it's a, a good uh, a protein source. However, uh, for brown egg layers, most brown egg layers come from Rhode Island Reds. Rhode Island Reds have a genetic mutation which doesn't break down a compound well uh, in, in uh, in canola. And so feeding canola meal to brown egg layers oftentimes will make uh, eggs that have a fishy odor to them. Um, so if you ever have brown hens and you get eggs that have, uh, have fishy odor to them, uh, many times that's from canola that's been used in the manufacturing of those feedstuffs. Many times today they no longer use canola in sack feed because of that particular problem. And then, uh, and then beans are not very good for, uh, for, for chicken diets. Um, they don't digest uh, the, the beans very well. They have uh, what are called poly, uh, uh, non-starch polysaccharides, which they can't break down. They don't have the right enzymes to break them down. And it gives them a bellyache, and they just quit eating. And so they don't do very well. They don't perform well on these kinds of ingredients. So, just with experience, we find out some ingredients are okay, others are not so good. 